Welcome to another edition of Voices from Convention. I'm Marta Lawrence. I'm joined by George Cunningham. He's on the faculty at Texas A&M. Um, and George, w tell me specifically what you do at Texas A&M. All right. I uh, teach in our sport management program, and then I direct our laboratory for diversity in sport. So that's actually why you're here at convention this year. You're going to be on a panel about diversity and hiring practices at university athletic departments. Tell me what you expect the panel to discuss. Um, well, I believe it will discuss ways to improve diversity and inclusion in athletics, and there's a lot of different folks on the uh, panel, including administrators and uh, researchers, so we ought to get a lot of different perspectives. Now, you've been very highly involved with developing a best practices um, document that we have here at convention, and it's also going to be mailed to universities around the country. Tell me some of the best practices you have come up with um, for university athletic departments. All right. Well, we, um, it's nothing we came up with. I would love to take credit for it, but it was, we interviewed people from five different universities. Um, who had done really great and great things in diversity. So chancellors, presidents, administrators, student athletes. And what we found were two things that have to uh, be in place. First was the value of diversity, uh, value differences and the different uh, things that people bring to the table. And then have an understanding of how diversity influences your workplace. So in some cases, race is... Uh, very important. In other places, it may be sexual orientation or age or gender, any way in which people can differ. And then once you identify those things, then there's a whole lot that you can do. So diversity training, bold top management leadership, providing opportunities for networking and development, um, integrating diversity throughout the department. So it's not just the job of one or two people or a committee, but it's a department-wide initiative. Um, and those are some of the top things um, that really the people at the places we visited told us and had worked for them. So tell me, um, you know, there is clearly a, a dearth of both racial and, in and, and most cases, gender diversity in athletics departments. Do you think, um, if you were going to give me a best, best guess, how many years do you think it would be before we see athletics departments um, really embracing this idea and this notion of diversity and, and implementing it then on their campus? <laughs> what are some of the hurdles, yeah, too? That's a good question. <laughs> um, in some ways, you know, the, the places where we visited are doing that, and they see the benefit from learning from others, uh, and they see the benefit of diversity in terms of objective measures of performance, in terms of marketing to diverse fans, and then revenues generated. I mean, there's a lot of benefits. So I think the more those benefits are outlined, and then the more people will buy into it. Um, and then changing, if you look at the reasons for the underrepresentation of different groups, it's, I would say, there's a host of reasons from individual factors to societal factors. Um, but the more people come to think of, when they think of administrator, a lot of times they have in their mind a prototype, uh, and the same for coach. So it may be, I would suspect in a lot of cases, a white male from a certain background in a certain class. And the more that we see different people in those roles who may not fit that certain stereotype or prototype, then that prototype starts to break down. The stereotypes and categorizations start to break down, and then... Uh, you don't have that stereotype in your mind, and really, it's open to everybody. Um, you know, the NCAA and many other institutions have um, uh, have created programs that help develop talent in uh, minorities and in in women, um, so that um, they can then contribute to the athletics administration in the future. Uh, what role do those programs play in developing young talent? They uh, they play a very important role from the feedback that we've receive from administrators and coaches and that it provides a good network and the bigger the one's network the more people you know the stronger your ties then the better chance you have of landing that job and when people have jobs available they come to think of you as well so it plays a very critical role I would say. Great um, you know Clearly, this is a, an important subject, so thank you very much for your, your work on this and, um, and for developing those best practices, which I know are going to be of, of a lot of use to our member schools. Um, what day is your session? 
It's tomorrow, so Wednesday. Wednesday at, yes. do you know what time? 9.30 or 15, somewhere in there. Terrific. Thanks so much, George, for joining us, and thank you for joining us for another issue of Voices from Convention.